Hello and welcome to What the Math. Today's topic is from Chapter 6, uh, SAP Chapter D, and it's called Quantitative Continuous Data. Quantitative is a very difficult word to pronounce, so don't judge. Um, and basically today we're going to discuss the differences between continuous data and uh, discrete data, which is what we talked about in the previous video. If you recall from the previous video, I mentioned that statistics in general, oops, that's not what I wanted. I wanted to have a paintbrush. Uh, statistics can be uh, usually described as either categorical, and that's when you have categories, essentially things like uh, uh, colors, orange, black, red, or uh, names, John, Stephen, uh, and so on and so forth. And it can also be quantitative. This is where you have numbers, and this is what we're actually going to be mostly dealing with. So this is, this is numbers. And numbers can be subdivided into discrete, and this is what we talked about last time. Discrete is when you have very, um, whole, uh, basically whole numbers, very specific numbers, so the numbers like one, two, three, four. So for example, when you're counting um, numbers on dice, so dice can be, um, one die can be between one and six, two dice can be between two and 12, but they cannot be like 2.5 because you can't really land your die this way. Um, and, and then you have data that is continuous, so this is data that can be any number. It can be anything, anything, anything. This is when you, usually when you deal with measurements, so it can be anything like, so basically if you look at the kind of a progression line, it can be anywhere, anywhere between minus infinity to infinity. So I just say, for example, 4.7 or anything in between. And this is basically our topic today. So today we're going to be talking about continuous data. In the previous video, when I was talking about discrete data, we actually ended up making a kind of a graph which was made up of these columns and uh, this on the left side was frequency or basically how often something appears frequency and on the bottom we had some kind of a value so this can be anything let's just say this is going to be uh numbers on dice numbers on dice uh so and we had um kind of a bar graph that had frequency distribution and kind of looked like this and all of these numbers were very specific. They weren't somewhere in between. They were basically um, something like this would be, I just say two, this is three, four, five, and six. And this is basically how often, um, I just say if we're looking at dice, so how often number four appeared on dice? It appeared more often than number five, it appeared more often than number three, and so on. And this was discrete, and you can see that these columns are actually kind of separated, so there's actually space between them. And this is called a column graph. So column graphs are usually or most often used with discrete statistics. Now in continuous statistics, we have something similar. We still use a kind of a graph that has bars as well, but these bars are usually joined together. So um, if this was frequency on the left, then the numbers on the bottom have to be continuous. So these are continuous numbers, and this can be something like, let's just say we're measuring something very specific that has uh, decimal points. So let's just say um, student weight, uh, student weight at our school, uh, and this can be anywhere between, I don't know, 25 pounds for the lightest kid to maybe uh, 300 pounds for the heaviest. I don't even know how, how heavy someone in our school is. And uh, frequency of weight, uh, is how often this particular weight uh, appears in our school. So let's just say we're going to come up with random trivial examples. So this is going to be 20, 40, 60. And I'll just say we're going to go to 140. And we're going to draw these uh, continuous bars on top, starting with the first one, then the second one, third one, and so on and so forth. These actually have to be equal. Uh, mine are a little bit fatter than some of them are fatter than the others. Um, and you'll see something like this. So they're actually all connected. And this is a frequency distribution that you're more likely to see in statistics, especially in the university. You'll often see this. And there's a name for this type of a graph. This is actually called um, a histogram. Histogram is a very common graph uh, to display statistical terms, statistical numbers. So here, if you look at this histogram, basically it says that at our school, um, kids with that are 80 or just say 80 pounds are most likely to appear so they're most frequent and then the kids that are 140 pounds are least likely to appear and kids that are 20 pounds are second least likely to appear um, so basically this histogram tells us in terms of statistics 
um, how likely we are to see someone with certain type of weight. And let's take a look at one of the examples from the book. This is from subchapter D. I'm going to zoom in on this so you can read it. Basically, it's about lobsters. So imagine we caught a bunch of lobsters and a sample of 20 juvenile lobsters was randomly selected from a tank. And this is their weight. Uh, oh, sorry, not weight. This is their length. Length in centimeters. So one lobster was really tiny. Oops. Really tiny. It was only 4.9 centimeters. And then one of them was uh, really long, 7.3 centimeters, and so on and so forth. So now basically we, uh, the question asks us to organize our data using frequency table. So um, this is what we did last time, uh, last video. Basically, I'm not going to do it by hand, but what you should be getting is something like this. Your frequency table um, will have frequency of certain lengths of lobsters. And here, because we don't actually have specific values, you have to decide um, what type of a scale you're going to use. So in, in this example, they chose to use uh, lengths of between three and four centimeters, not including four, but including three as their first value. Then four between four and five as the second value, five and six, six and seven, seven and eight. If you were to choose specific values like three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, you would have way too many points. It would be very hard to graph. But if you actually use, um, if you actually use a range of values, so in this case between three and four, between four and five, and so on, it, you'll only have five points that you have to deal with, and the frequency will be a lot easier to display as well. So we can see from this table that. Uh, between four and five is the most common lobster and between seven and eight the, basically the giant lobsters are the least likely to appear so if we were to plot this now if we actually make a table or sort of make a uh, histogram frequency histogram it will look something like this so our bottom axis is the length of lobsters in centimeters this is length in centimeters and our left our y-axis is the frequency frequency of a, uh, lobsters or how frequent they are in terms of appearance and now we're just going to basically make the uh, the bars so this is our frequency histogram frequency histogram and we're going to start with the first value so between three and four uh between three and four appear oh i forgot to put numbers all right so that's better between three and four appears three times so we're basically going to draw a bar that goes up to three starting from three and this is our bar number one between four and five it's six times so it's going to go uh, connect to this bar and go all the way up here return to five then our next one goes to five so we can just start here and go down then it's at four so from four down to seven and finally the last one is from two to eight and that's it this is our histogram uh, for lobster frequency. So let's actually compare with the answer that they have in the book. And it looks almost exactly the same as the answer in the book. The only difference that you'll notice is on the left side right here, there's this little thingy that they use and it kind of looks like this. And this represents that this is the um, particular value of x axis that we emitted. Uh, they didn't include uh, one and two because it's really not important for our graph. And uh, this is important to understand because sometimes, especially when you read um, uh, uh, scientific papers or even if you um, watch the news, you'll see these graphs, but you will notice that they're actually emitting a number. And this is kind of important because let me just show you an example from one of the previous questions in, in, uh, in chapter, in subchapter C. Or actually, this is in subchapter B, and this is from the theory of knowledge example that they use in the book. And it's actually a really good example. So um, here we have absolutely the same graphs. So on graph on the left, let me just explain it to you, shows you that um, between months of January to April, this was the increase in profit of a company. And right here you see um, this is a profit and it slightly increases, so not by much, it's not a very dramatic change. But then there's another graph, and this is what you're more likely to hear on the news, especially if the company is trying to promote itself. They use that little nudgy thingy because they removed everything down from 14. This is all disappeared. You don't actually see this anymore. And now it actually looks like they made a lot of profit because suddenly they're uh, their bar graphs are skyrocketing. It suddenly goes up really dramatically. It looks like they're actually making more money than they are uh, because they wanted to make it look like they are making profit. But in reality, they're, you know, it's, this is actually the same thing. They're not making any more profit in either graph. Uh, but because they changed the X, oh, sorry, Y axis here, it doesn't look more dramatic. 
so um, just you know, make sure that you understand how how to read the graphs because you'll often hear this, you'll often see this on the news, and that's how a lot of companies, a lot of um, advertisers try to basically you know fool uh, the public. So this is actually a really good example of how graphs can be misinterpreted or how they can be used for to promote your own message. Okay, so this is it for quantitative continuous data. And one of these days I'm gonna learn how to pronounce the word quantitative. And I uh, thank you for watching. Good luck to you and bye-bye.